I watched 20 booktubers top fantasy lists or nearly 8 hours of content to try to answer this question. What are the best fantasy series according to booktube? And oh boy was I surprised. A total of 76 fantasy series were mentioned and I now have the ultimate list of fantasy series you should read according to booktube. I was especially surprised by which series was ranked number 20, number 10 and number 3 so make sure to stick to the end to see what those series are because I can almost assure you that you won't be able to guess which those are. But first, how did I do it? Firstly, I watched 20 booktubers top 10 fantasy lists with a couple of exceptions and wrote down everyone's lists. If a series was at number 1 on someone's list then I gave that series 10 points and if it was number 10 then I gave it 1 point. I then gave all the books points and then I added the numbers together and found out what series was the most popular according to booktube. However, I had to make some slight changes. Firstly, a couple of booktubers didn't have the books in any particular order and in those cases I gave all the books 5 points. Secondly, a couple of booktubers mentioned some manga which I did include but they were so rarely mentioned that they didn't make it anywhere near the top 20 list. Thirdly, some of the lists I did find didn't fit my criteria exactly but I still decided to take them into account. For example, I found some rankings from Philip Chase and Patrick Leo on only completed series so they didn't include some really big names such as Stormlight Archive. Still, I did take these into account. Fourth and lastly, to make it easier I did combine some series. If someone mentioned for example Mistborn on spot number 8 and Stormlight on spot number 2 then I did combine those two series into one. So in that case I would just have put Cosmere as number 2 on the list. So without further ado, let's settle what are the top 20 fantasy series according to booktube. Also if you want to take a guess at what are the top 5 series according to booktube feel free to pause the video now and comment down below to see if you got them correct. But first, let's mention some surprises. Firstly, the biggest surprise of them all is that The Witcher only got a mere 6 points and was ranked 43 out of 76 series. Considering that The Witcher has received an adaptation and multiple games, I did expect to see this series ranked higher. The second surprise is that both The Dresden Files and The Dark Tower were not able to break into the top 20 series, ranking number 23 and number 24. Probably the saddest one is that His Dark Materials only got 4 points and was ranked number 53 out of 76. There were a total of 4 series that only received 1 point and those were The Bilgariot, The Trials of Morgan Crow, The Chronicle of the Hew Unhewn Throne and Percy Jackson while Twilight got a staggering 2 points. And lastly, Narnia did not get a single mention which I thought was really interesting. So let's start with the top 20 list and this is a huge surprise. Or actually, we have 3 series that are on spot 19 with a total of 12 points. On number 19 spot, we have a huge surprise, which is Ash and Sand by Richard Nell, which is a self-published grim dark series. I did not expect to see a single self-published series in this list, so having a self-published series being ranked this high is incredibly exciting. Not that many people mentioned this series, but there were a couple that gave this series a very high ranking, hence why it's broken into the top 20. Well done Richard Nell. Ash and Sand shared the 19th spot with The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu and The Earth Sea Cycle by Ursula Le Guin. It's really exciting to see the Dandelion Dynasty growing in popularity like crazy. A couple of years ago, no one talked about this series and now it's being mentioned as one of the greatest fantasy series of all time by many people. Well done, Ken Liu. Also, it doesn't really come to anyone's surprise that Earthsea is doing so well. That is a classic that is much loved. I did give the first book a try a couple of years ago, but I didn't really enjoy it that much, but I do understand why people love it. Moving on, on a shared 17 spot with 16 points, we have another huge surprise. Firstly, we have Harry Potter, which is without a doubt one of the most influential fantasy series ever. That series has definitely fallen a bit from grace, but it's quite nice to see that people still appreciate it for what it is. But the really big surprise is that the King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss is also ranked on a joint 17th place. I really did expect this series to be ranked much higher, but a lot of people have mentioned that they couldn't rank the series any higher due to it being unfinished and only having two books. Are you also surprised that it's only ranked number 17? On 15th place we have two series. With 70 points we have The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. Now this series was mentioned in a lot of lists that were 1 or 2 years old so it might be lower now especially considering that the last book that recently came out 
didn't get a particularly positive reception, but I'm also really surprised to see that this series is higher than the King Killer Chronicle. The books of Babel are very high on my TBR. I love original fantasy and I've heard that this series is very, very original. The other series on number 15 is the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Now, this is one of my priority series to read and finish this year, and I really, really need to start it soon. I have only heard great things, and it comes to no surprise to me that this is ranked this high. Also, this series won the Hugh Awards three years in a row, which is incredibly impressive. Moving on, on number 14, with 18 points, we have another series that wasn't mentioned that often, but those that mentioned it ranked it really high, and that is Memory, Sorrow and Thorn by Tad Williams. This series is kind of known as the series that inspired the Game of Thrones series, at least partially, and it's known for its beautiful writing. I still haven't read this one, but it's very high on my TBR. Have you read Memory, Sorrow and Thorn? Let me know your thoughts if you have. And before we continue, a special thanks to my patrons who support my passion for books. I really appreciate it. On number 13, with 20 points, we have one of my all-time favorite series, if not potentially my all-time favorite, and that is The Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee. Oh my gosh, this series is so, so, so good. Also, did I mention that Vanda Lee recently made an appearance in a video of mine? If you're looking for a Godfather-esque series set in a modern Asian setting, then pick up this series. It is a truly masterpiece. Jade Legacy is arguably one of the best, if not the best, fantasy book I have ever read. It is just incredible. We are getting close to the biggest surprise on this list, which is number 10. But first, on a joint 11th place with 21 points, we firstly have the Poppy War Trilogy. I was also surprised to see this one ranked as high, although I am a huge fan of it. It just seems like a lot of people didn't enjoy the last book that much in the series, but I am personally very glad to see that this series is ranked this high. But sharing this 11th spot, we have The Gentleman's Bastards by Scott Lynch. This series is a booktube darling for sure, and I definitely expected to see this series being ranked high. However, this is also an unfinished series, which is probably why it didn't make it into top 10 list. Now, let's get to the top 10 series according to booktube, and I did say that number 10 was a huge surprise, didn't I? Ranking as number 10 with 29 points, we have The Great Coast by Sebastian de Castell. I did not see this coming. I read the first two books in the series a couple of years ago and I thought they were decent while I really did not enjoy the third book, which made me actually not want to even continue the series. These books are filled with humor and are told through a first person narration. Now, not that many people mentioned the Great Codes, but the ones that did ranked it very high, hence why it has a staggering score of 29 points. But moving on to number 9, with 35 points, we have one of the biggest series out there. This world. This series has more than 40 books and were, have been published over 30 years and has gained a huge reader base. This work is absolutely hilarious, absurd and thought provoking. This series is not particularly for me but I definitely see why people love it and I'm not surprised at all that this is in the top 10 list. Coming in at number 8 with 49 points and now we're getting into the really high points tallies we have the Lassen, Book of the Fallen by Steven Erikson and Ian Eslemont. This series is praised for its complexity and for having absolutely insane world building and for being one of the largest series out there. Erikson and Eslemont have crafted a world with literally hundreds of thousands of years of history and have created multiple continents rich with history, lore and diverse cultures. I made a couple of videos talking about my experience reading this series, so if you want to know my full thoughts, then make sure to check out those videos. Coming in at number 7 with 50 points, we have another favorite of mine, and that is The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb, which is a 17 book series split into 4 trilogies and 1 quartet. I read the first 6 books in the series, and they are some of my all-time favorites. Hop's ability to write characters is absolutely unrivaled. If you're looking for a character-driven adventure with beautiful writing, then check out The Realms of the Elderlings. It is absolutely terrific and it'll probably also make you cry. Coming in at a joint fifth place with 56 points, we firstly have A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. I don't need to say much about this one. 
A Song of Ice and Fire is definitely one of the most influential series in modern fantasy and has now become a huge franchise. Readers are still waiting for book 6, but nonetheless, it has made a huge impact and is loved by many. But interestingly, sharing this spot with 56 points, we also have The First Law Universe by Joe Abercrombie, another grimdark series. If you're looking for a humorous grimdark series with incredible characters, then this series is for you. I have read 8 of the 10 books set in this universe and I have loved all of them. I mean, no one writes like Abercrombie. Abercrombie has such a distinct tone and a, and a way of portraying characters that you just need to experience it for yourself. The First Law Universe is a must read for fans of grimdark and deserves this spot in my opinion. Now we're getting into the top 4 and it's getting interesting. At number 4 with a total of 64 points we have The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. This massive 15 book series, if you include the prequel, is one of the most epic fantasy stories written to date. This series has captivated millions of readers with its incredible world building, epic plot, memorable characters, and also this series is now being adapted by Amazon, with season 2 being released very soon. The Wheel of Time is one of my all time favorite series and is one of the main reasons why I fell in love with fantasy again as an adult. I would highly recommend checking out The Wheel of Time. Top 3 and oh boy this is another huge surprise. On a third place with a staggering 67 points we have The Banished Lands by John Gwynn. Did you see that coming? The Banished Lands is a 7 book series spanning one quartet and one trilogy with Malice being the first book which was published in 2012. This series has gained a lot of traction in the past 3 years or so and it is absolutely brilliant. I read all 7 books in this series and I have loved all of them. They are fast paced, action filled and character driven stories and it's definitely one of the best series I have ever read. However, I did not see in a million years that the Banished Lands would be ranked higher than this world, Malassan, First Law, A Song of Ice and Fire among booktubers. That is just crazy. It just, just goes to show how much people are actually enjoying John Gwynn's books. On spot number 2, which may or may not come to surprise to anyone, we have the Middle Earth Universe with a total of 72 points. What can I say? We all knew that this series would be up there, but it might be a surprise for someone that it's actually not number 1. The Middle Earth Universe is definitely one, if not the most influential fantasy series ever to be written, and it deserves to be up here. But let's just go straight to number one shall we with an absolutely staggering 117 points which is 45 points more than the lord of the rings and this will come to no one's surprise and that is the cosmere by brandon sanderson with more than 20 stories being set in this universe this series has gained an absolutely insane status in the fantasy community Everyone loves everything about Bander Sanderson's, from his writing, to his special editions, to his lectures and his YouTube channel. Sanderson is, without a doubt, the Tolkien of our day, and I'm confident that his works will live from decades to come. So that is it. What are you most surprised about about this list? If you want to see the full list, then you can access it on my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next video.